tis the season for construction, which some might say is never ending in Chicago. But some of our bridges are in particularly bad shape, with this image causing a stir on social media last month. And it should, as it should. And this is that bridge in real life. It's up in Edgewater at Peterson Avenue. Both it and the nearby one on Ridge are currently being revamped, while a new train station will be built in between them to the tune of $22 million. But it's not easy keeping up with everything that needs to be fixed. It is whack-a-mole. Harold Brookins Jr. is the 21st Ward Alderman and Chair of the City's Transportation Committee and says for far too long we've kicked the can down the tracks, so to speak, when it comes to investment in infrastructure. The infrastructure is in disrepair and needs systematic maintenance and in some cases need to be totally replaced. As part of a much bigger metro project, that's going to happen for a dozen bridges on the north side. You've seen a recognition maybe in the last four or five years from politicians that we have to invest in our infrastructure. Michael Gillis, Director of Communications, says 12 of them between Addison and Fullerton will be refurbished or replaced, with that work slated to get started next summer. And he's certain they're safe for now. They're safe to operate over, uh, but you know, how, how much longer is that going to be true? But they're rusted, have unintended skylights, and, well, they're just really old. Look, these bridges were built in 1880 to 1900. Um, they've served the city well, but they're past their useful life. In all, it'll cost about $263 million, with, we're told, most of the funding coming from Springfield, which all sounds great, but those living adjacent aren't happy with the plan. People who own right along the property line are concerned, yes. And here's why. There used to be three tracks on the line, and currently there's just two, which sit to the east. The goal is to keep a pair in play throughout construction to keep service running smoothly. And so we're doing it in a staged manner where we build basically one new bay of a bridge while two old bays are still there, and then start operating trains over the new bay and keep one of the old bays and replace the second and then when two new bays are there we'll demolish the third. The long and short of that is everything will shift west, pushing trains about 20 feet closer to homes. We are the only community where the front doors actually face the train tracks. Deepak Patel says that shift will be the end of this sanctuary-like space outside his front door and with this path likely to be impacted just getting inside might be an issue in itself. This is gone, how do you get to your house? That's, that's a great question. He's been living here off Deversey for nine years. So there's just a lot of question marks right now. But his neighbour, James Robert Shaw, just bought here last year. Not knowing this sits on Union Pacific land. We kind of missed that, and I think our realtors did as well. And tells us moving this noise even closer. And this is the engine first. Yeah. Isn't what he signed up for. I chose to live next to it. I didn't choose to live right on it. That's the difference. He and Patel, among residents, attended an open house about the project in April. Where is our community liaison? Right, right. This is pathetic. Which many felt didn't offer a lot of answers. We were expecting more of a dialogue to happen, a question and answer, um, but unfortunately there was just a lot of poster boards um, and a lot of scripted responses. Sarah Jackson was there too and has been living next to the train line for 12 years. She knew back then her backyard was UP property, but she's maintained it for over a decade, only to learn it could now be replaced with cinder blocks. I didn't buy my backyard knowing that I was going to have a nine foot wall, but on top of that wall, very uh, similar to a prison wall, uh, they will be putting a chain link fence on the top of that as well, um, essentially blocking out all sunlight to my home. For neighbours who have balconies, the result could look like this, with one resident drawing up these renderings. My fear is anybody with these patio balconies, if they have small children like I do, could simply lean over 
touch the train, there's almost that vacuum pull. Other concerns include uprooting of vegetation, the potential for increased vibrations on foundations, and whether 20 feet could mean life or death in the case of a derailment. They do say don't get close to the train, but they're bringing the train very close to our homes, making it very unsafe. We're told compared to pre-pandemic levels, metro ridership on the UP North Line is down between 35 and 48 percent, with that decline prompting some to say an impact to service may not be the worst thing in the world while these bridges get back on track. And they're hoping their voices are heard right now, rather than down the line or not at all. It's not a... I don't want this in my backyard. It's we understand that Metro needs to do this said project, but they're not listening to us as neighbors. Brona Tumulty, WGN News.